right, y'all. William Keith Dykes here of WKD Construction, and welcome to my channel. On today's video, we are going to start part five here on the Melton Farm project. As you see behind me, we've actually done done some work <laughs> since uh, since the last video. Uh, but today's video, we are going to be installing the uh, zip system wall sheathing, and then a little flashing detail before we put the sheathing on against the bottom plate and the concrete slab. If you're just now joining us here and you're catching this episode, part five, go back, I'll put a link and you can go back and check out from episode one, two, three, and four. Do a little binge watching, ain't nothing wrong with that. We did the sheathing video a while back. It was around right after Christmas, it was cold as hell. And uh, so, I, don't, I didn't shoot a terrible lot of detail on putting on the sheathing itself. I do go through, you know, the tape and stuff like that, but as far as showing a lot of just ho-hum stuff about, <laughs> about just nailing on sheathing, I didn't do that. But this does go into detail with the uh, flashing detail with some zip liquid flash around the bottom. Uh, and then I kind of go into detail about the tape and kind of why I use it. Good morning. <laughs> it's cold. You see, we got we had that big ass winter blast, and uh, it snowed. It is right at well, right above freezing. We're here, and we're starting to install the zip system panels. Uh, we're starting at the top, mainly because I'm having to do a the uh, zip liquid flash. I'm having to do a flashing detail between the bottom plate and the block and so we're going to start at the top work our way down this is a nine foot wall so we'll have a one foot piece at the bottom which is fine so but we'll give it time that way we can give the time the liquid flash to dry but i'll show you so i'm going around trying to get the uh liquid flash installed before the guys come around with the with the zip panels but it's kind of kind of taking a few few extra steps Get my microphone in. Keep seeing the woolly booger over here. It's taking a few extra steps. I'm having to take the propane heater <laughs> and then thaw the uh, snow and uh, ice off the block, get it up to temperature off the bottom board. That way everything will stick. Uh, we are right above freezing. I think Zip wants you to do uh, 35 degrees, but we're right, we're right at it, right at that threshold. But so I'm getting it all dried off with the torch and then using a little foam rotting, just a little bit, right on the outside, just so I don't use so much zip flashing. And then, uh, and then we'll come back with the zip flashing, but I'll show you. Now that I've got all the moisture uh, burnt off of there, dried off of there, uh, as you can see, we've got a little small gap, not much. There's a, it gets bigger and lower here, like I said, because we were having to shim the other day to get the plates right. Uh, just because, like I said, that is, you get block layers, you get concrete guys, so nothing is going to be perfect. And I don't like to use the big foam sheets on the bottom, so, so this is the best next thing. Uh, but I'll stick a little foam rotting under there and then we'll zip flash over the top. All right, check this out. I got a three quarter inch foam rod. I didn't need the whole piece. So I just took a piece of three quarter inch PVC, put a blade plate in the end of it. <laughs> I can rip it like a champ. Heck yeah, man. Got it, coach.
grab the old zip system liquid flash. I'll give you another little tip of advice too. Uh, if you're going to be using the sausage tubes of Zip Flash, make sure you get a good caulking gun. See that? The plunger, it goes all the way around. It's tight. I bought a cheap one, like half price. Tried to be, uh, just tried to be cheap <laughs> and it didn't work. Every time I would get to the end, that little gap around there, the uh, tube would get hung and I couldn't get it out and it was a pain in the ass. So I uh, spent the money and got a uh, zip system one. I've run a couple tubes, man, and it works like a champ. No problems at all. Beautiful. So if you're wondering why I'm doing this at the connection, because it's a very important, uh, you can, there's a lot of air loss that can happen right there. Blow underneath that plate and you'll have a lot of air seepage into the house which then we're, tr we're trying to build a very energy efficient house try to keep all the air loss down that's why i like the zip the zip system uh, they have everything that works together starting from liquid flash to the tape everything is taped off sealed off uh, and it just makes it it just makes an airtight envelope better than just house wrap and some just some Nikolai stuff so <laughs> so use the system and uh, we're trying to cut out all the air air infiltration into the house but once we put the panels up I'll come back and we'll zip flash again against the panel to the block and we will totally seal that off and the outside will be air and watertight at this connection one of the most important rules to remember before you start installing your wall sheathing is I don't care how I don't care how good your wall is braced off go back and check it before you start putting any sheathing on at all go ahead just make sure it is plumb check both sides that way if you have to adjust it before you put the sheathing on that is okay because if you go ahead and nail the hell out of the uh, sheathing and then you check it and it's wrong oh daddy you're, you're gonna be there for a minute most of y'all probably just let it go but I wouldn't be able to let it go I'd have to knock all the sheathing off and and fix it so check before you start installing any sheathing at all just to make sure I'll take you around here show you Steve and Brenner on it like I said we got to do the bottom which is fine once that dries we can come back in the bottom I'm not gonna cut the window openings out right now because this is we're not even this is December 27th uh, and my windows won't be here till March I think the end of March so we'll probably maybe just leave an opening in the front and the back maybe make a makeshift some type some type of door uh, but we're basically gonna leave all the window holes closed up once we get the windows we'll come back router cut all the uh, openings out that way we don't have a lot of a lot of uh, rain and stuff or whatever to get inside and, and then cuts out on wind too if we're working inside on dead wood and stuff after we get the after we get the trusses up so there's nothing really fancy or sexy about putting on sheathing and we're in the damn mud that is fun that is, that is the best part about it all I hate mud but uh so that's really not why i'm gonna show you about the the sheathing i mean there's not really a whole lot to it chalking up lines and, and nailing it uh we'll get into it and i'll show you about the zip zip taping but that's probably about it and if you're new to using the zip system i've been using it probably 15 years uh i was like the first one in my in my area to start using it and i haven't i haven't changed i hadn't went back house wrap sucks it's got that green coating on there it is waterproof, tape the seams, we're air sealed, we're water sealed. You can even take some liquid flash, go over the nail holes. Uh, but another little thing about the, uh, 
zip panel. It's got a built-in spacer. It's kind of uh, nodule that way when you put your panels together and they swell up uh, it's not gonna pucker you know like you lot of see it see a lot of people that put uh, OSB on the roof and uh, on a good sunny day you'll see every damn panel on the roof because your edges are too tight they swell up and standard OSB sucks so <laughs> so I don't use it uh, like I said I started using zip system and I ain't never looked back I will use it on the roof we use 5 8 inch on the roof. This is 7 16 They do have a half inch wall. They've got, uh, I think it's called R Zip, which has got insulation impregnated onto the backside. So, I mean, they have options galore. Nine foot tall, uh, eight foot tall, eight foot lengths, nine foot lengths. So, very good system. Uh, you do, you have your panels, your full panels. On your butt joints, you do space them. We use an eighth inch penny, eighth, eight penny nail to space your your end your end grain because it does not have a factory spacer on there. Just just on the long length is the factory spacer. So you do use a spacer on the end, and then you tape them. Make sure your tape is tight. No wrinkles. We don't want any wrinkles. Wrinkles allow water and air into the joint. So. We'll get around the corner over here and I'll show you. I think I got a little snot rolling down. <laughs> this is what I mean when there's no, you don't want wrinkles in the tape. All of your edges are nice and tight. Everything has been rolled. There's no room for water to drip down the wall and uh, find a place. Uh, if you have a wrinkle, it's got a little pucker right there. Water would come down and then liable to find that little, little dip and then, you know, work its way back into into the uh, seam there. Mm -hmm. And when we nail on the panels, if we miss a nail, we go back. That nail missed, take it out, hand drive it in to where it needs to go. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna walk into my job and uh, see nails all over the place. We're gonna take them out if we do miss. And the best way I found to install the zip tape, because I've been using it a long time, is when I start, I'll start down here, whatever. I'll, I'll stick about a two inch swath to the wall. Then I'll stretch it out, I don't know, seven, eight feet. Then stretch it, just pull the roll just a little bit, put a little stretch onto the tape, and then just lightly push it down to the sheathing, and then you'll come back and roll it. But stretch the tape just a little bit, just a whisk, not, not nothing crazy, but just stretch it enough. That way, if the temperature is cool, it's usually cooler, you know, in the mornings, and then uh, heats up in the afternoons, so stuff, you know, likes to loosen up. But if you stretch the tape, I found that it does a lot smoother install. All right, so if my uh, battery holds up long enough, this is the backside. Come around here. I did piece it in the bottom just because of the I was doing the liquid flash the other day, I was trying to hold it off as long as possible for that to dry. So this side goes all the way up because I'm gonna have my trusses sitting right there. So I don't need that wood to go all the way up. But right here we're gonna have a gable. The gable will go up. So I want my zip panel to come down onto the wall and then up onto that uh, truss that way it really ties it in and makes it really strong ties it down onto that wall versus if i just had the plywood at the top plate and then you piece in your other piece then your truss is just basically sitting there so that really you, you use your zip panel as a, a giant gusset so you're tying it into that wall and it makes it really strong but you can see our zip flash so we'll come back and uh, I'll go ahead and zip flash that again, make that uh, totally water waterproof and uh, airtight. We'll probably wait till later on we can start doing the siding and we got the roof and the overhangs and everything on. But this is all we like. We got to get this taped up. It's been raining kind of drizzly all morning and like I said, the freaking mud and <laughs> I hate mud. Walking around with five pounds on your feet. 
son of a. All right, y'all. That was it. That was our video on how we install some sheathing, some 7 16 inch zip sheathing. The best, the best in the business. So as you see behind me, we've done a lot more work than just on this video since, since we've installed the sheathing. We've put the trusses on, the roof decking, fascia, fly rafters, cut out the window holes. We got all those pitched, show you how to pitch the uh, window seals, liquid flash them, and then, oh, and this right here, check this out. A stamped concrete back porch. So a lot, a of, lot of good stuff. Keep coming back. I want you to keep coming back. <laughs> I want you to keep watching. So come back and watch part six as we set trusses here on the Melton Farm project. Once again, I'm Keith Dykes. This is the wall sheathing video. Thanks for watching. And as always, got it, coach. <laughs>